never talked to the seller, never, you know, looked at the house. I didn't even contract the house. My team ran the whole deal and we sold it to, I think, Wedgwood and okay. we, we made a $27,000 profit. Okay, that's big. Yeah, it's it's awesome. And but people are probably saying it's. I mean, I'm gonna get a, a further chip on your shoulder. <laughs> Go get a deal in L.A. or San Francisco and yeah. make make a profit on it. Yeah, well, because they're not doing deals in Central California. That, that that's true. So I picked an easy. Maybe somebody would argue is a little bit more of a you're, less you're bullying, competitive. You're bullying an easy target. <laughs> that's what you're going for. If you want to have the chip on your shoulder, go after the heavyweight, L.A. True. or San Francisco. True. I I've made offers on houses in uh, San Diego, but nothing ever uh, stuck at this point. But mm. uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to resist to 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 go uh, make that happen. I won't flip a house there because I heard somebody else flipped a house there and title wouldn't give them all their profits. They held some back because of California state taxes. I've heard that before. So they, they keep it until you like file everything and really? you get it back at the end of the year. Or who knows they want when. you to file taxes there. Yeah. That's, that's what Which it is. is ridiculous. Taxation is theft. We all know this. Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. Uh, is that one of the things that you look at? Like, you know, taxes for the, is that why you moved to Vegas for the taxes or did you do it for the weather? No, I did it for the weather. Um, my wife and I just were sick of Nebraska winters. Um, it was just brutal. Like it was cold for seven months out of the year. And we just um, wanted a, just a different way of living. And so Las Vegas was where we landed and it helped because her sister was here. So we actually had somebody to uh, move out here to, we already knew, right? Yeah. So it wasn't a business decision to move out here? No. Like it, it, looking back, dude, it was like the worst business decision. Yeah. Because think about it. I just started my business with my business partner that I had met. We both quit our jobs right around the f uh, first quarter of 20, 2019. And I'm not kidding you, man. Four months after we started our business, the first month we got our deal, I went to him and I said, hey, my wife and I are looking to move to Las Vegas. What do you think? Like, can you imagine that? Like that conversation yeah. four months into a new business with a new, like new relationship. I would think that you weren't really serious about it. Uh, yeah, but I was. And he, and that's why, that's why I have so much respect for him because mm -hmm. he's at a different season in his life. Uh, he's 20 years older than me. And he, you know, he, he thought about it. He's like, I could tell he didn't really think that was going to be a good idea, but he's like, you know what, man? Like, if that's what you want to do, do it. I, I, I would have, if I would have uh, done what you did when I was younger, I would have made that move too. Because when you start having a family and kids, you get pretty much anchored down like with school and all of these other activities. And so mm -hmm. we made that move when I had a two year old daughter and I had no idea what to expect, like coming out here, um, how that would affect the business and all of that. I, mean, I had no you, idea. Were you scared about it? You had more success than you've ever had in your whole entire life. Everything's blowing up for you. You're making more money than you made it in a year in one deal. Yeah. And then you just decide to move somewhere else. Were you scared that you were going to lose everything? No, I, I wasn't. At that time, I had, it was, I, was, I kind of had my blinders on. I'm not going to lie mm -hmm. because it was like, well, if I figured it out from going, to 40,000 in credit card debt with a baby on the way to quitting my job, selling my house, giving me a little bit of a buffer. Um, I just knew we were going to figure it out. Did you know the whole time you could do it remotely? I did. Did you have someone else to compare yourself to or you're just, like, I mean, when, when did you know the OG is like Sean Terry, you know, like the, these guys talking about, flipping houses virtually or, or a whole virtual wholesaling. And so I knew that if they could do it, so could I. And it was really just one deal again, kind of like that first wholesale deal was proof of concept. I, it was a text and I bought a house right from basically right from over another investor who I knew. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget it, man. He called me up. He's like, dude, you just bought the deal that I was literally at the house with the seller in front of them, shaking their hand seven hours ago. What just happened? And I'm like, uh, I offered her more money. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I gave her an extra thousand dollars because I, I was like, it's it, timing is everything with these deals, right? Yeah. And so at that point in time, I'm like, all right, here we go. Like I'm onto something, right? 
All I have to do is I need to get in front of the right seller and then I need to provide them with the solution that they feel comfortable with. And whether that's in person or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whatsoever. My acquisitions guy, he thrives with shaking hands. He's a Midwest guy. He, he's good with people in person. And that's, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's what he's rolling with, right? He's good at it. Um, so you have those boots on the ground to make the in-person contact, right? We do in this case in, yep, in, in Omaha. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we wouldn't, we don't have to. He, he closes deals over the phone that are three miles from his house sometimes. So it, it is a really a case by case scenario. What we found is Midwest specifically, at least from my experience, different character, different personality. You're, you're talking about people who they'll refuse to do business with you until they can see that you're a real person. Right. Yeah. And we talked about market, dude, South Dakota, don't do business in South Dakota. Uh, that's, a, that's a market that I found out like there's just no, but there's no, there's no, there's no buyers like buying there. Is there money to be made? Of course. If are you trying, if you're trying to scale a, a business and do 10 deals a month, probably wouldn't do rapid city, South Dakota. So if you were a flipper there, then you could be one of the only ones, right? You could, you could dominate. So yeah. in that, if in that regard, you could be the authority, Mm-hmm. You, you could build a brand and you're the go-to person when it comes to selling my house in South Dakota. Yeah. Just no other exit strategy of spitting it off to another flipper or wholesaler. Just be capable of buying and you do, you do really well. 